Time is the most valuable resource in the world. It's the only one that you cannot get back. I actually think that that quote is pretty applicable to the world of Sanctuary, certainly so in this season. Beginning this season, we saw nothing but essentially complaints by individuals saying that the cost of gold for master working ranks was too great, and that it just took too much time to farm that gold. There's also a couple of other things that go along with that. And the first is, this is not a seasonal theme. Master working is here to stay. It's a core mechanic that will need to be done every season. So in future seasons, whatever is added will need to be done in addition to the time that you spend grinding these master working ranks. So this is all just gonna continue to add up. We've recently seen some changes to the cost of this gold, and you can now upgrade your gear to higher ranks a lot more affordably. In fact, I've been able to sustain the cost since the update just by vendoring off pieces that aren't needed. You can of course keep pieces that have improved aspects if you want to make sure to salvage those or even take a look at the greater affix pieces. Furthermore, you can then use the ovals and vendor up that gear as well. Now, not everybody may be at this point quite yet in the season, but if you continue to play, you'll certainly get here. And it's nice to know that gold is no longer the limiting factor because this brings us up to the first point of the season. We're waiting for the boss animation to actually spawn and that's going to take longer than it does for the boss to actually die. That doesn't count in the amount of time that it takes while you're waiting for it to even begin prior to the event. Now often, no matter how well you time that, it'll often be a minute or two, and perhaps even more if you're just looking to AFK. But trivial content is something we're seeing a lot of in this season. As you continue to push the master working ranks, say from rank 11 to rank 12, you'll need 250 of the final material, which means you need to farm tier 61 or higher within the pit. Now, you could continue to scale the pit in terms of tier or difficulty, but it might not be the best idea. And this again, brings trivial content back. In this case, I'm actually gonna farm tier 70, it's a really comfortable difficulty for me. What's interesting about the pit is that the monster scaling goes to a tremendous degree. It'll just continue to go as you go higher and higher. And although the materials gained will continue to scale, it doesn't actually match the rate in which the monsters do. This means that as you increase tiers, you're not necessarily increasing your efficiency. So farming the pit at higher tiers is really just something you do for the achievement or just the challenge if you're looking to do so yourself. If you want to actually make the most of your time, you'll farm a lower tier in order to do so more quickly. Now it's also possible to exchange materials after farming the pit. You can actually get three of the previous material for each one that you invest. This means that as soon as you have access to tier 61, that'll be likely the fastest thing for you to farm. Whether you need the top material or even the bottom one, you can just convert them and get far more than you could farm otherwise. This also means or translates to the point that farming tier 61, of course, having it unlocked and being able to beat it comfortably is gonna allow you to farm and upgrade all of your gear to rank 12 but the amount of time that it will take may vary. Most players would agree that farming somewhere between tier 61 and tier 80 is kind of a sweet spot. After that, the mob scaling, regardless of your build, just gets too far out of control compared to the return. So if you're following along, that means if you wanna farm gold or need that by any chance, you're gonna do some whispers. That'll likely be the fastest way in order to get some more gold, but it's trivial content. Now, if you wanna upgrade your gear, your character will be at a certain point, able to progress higher in terms of tiers or difficulty, but you'll be farming one that's lower or again, trivial content. This is where the value of time begins to take place because you're now doing two things within the game that are pretty trivial content, not necessarily engaging for a lot of players. Although there may be some that actually prefer to do trivial content, maybe half-mindedly can pay attention to the game. Now, regardless of which rank you're increasing, you're always gonna get the affixes increased by 5%, except for every fourth rank. So if ranks four, eight, and 12, you'll then also get a 25% bonus to one affix. So what this is saying is although the cost is increasing as you get higher ranks, the benefit really isn't, meaning the most meaningful increases to get or the most effective for your time is gonna be the lower ranks. So you don't necessarily have to push all your gear to the max level, but it kind of feels bad if you don't. So this is something that a lot of players are going to do every season on top of the additional seasonal themes that we have. If you want to farm rep for the season as well, you're going to want to make sure that you're taking advantage of the profane mind cage. This is fantastic, and I hope we see something like this in the pit as well. Something that will increase the level or perhaps increase drop rates, not necessarily of the cinders that we find here, but perhaps the materials to upgrade our master working ranks. That would essentially bring the scaling more in line. If we can bring the monster scaling to be more comparable to the increase in drops, it might be more beneficial to actually farm higher tiers. However, at this point, intentionally farming lower tiers just doesn't feel right or really like a good use of your time. Now, there's definitely a group or a portion of players that actually enjoy easier content, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Some people may play the game while multitasking. I personally even play the game sometimes on a mobile device. And it's a lot harder to play on mobile. Believe me, it's more difficult to see. It doesn't respond quite as well. And I prefer to do things like farming the Helltide than I would pushing the pit. 
So in no way am I saying that there isn't a place for content that may be easier. I'm just saying that perhaps we have too much this season. Now I'd love to hear feedback from all types of players and whether you're enjoying this season or not, has the difficulty of all the content been an issue for you in continuing to stay engaged or even continuing to play? Would you like to see more difficult content now or potentially even the future? All this can be used as feedback to help continue and improve the game. In general, I actually really enjoy the master working systems and in no way do I mean this video in a negative way. I'd just like to continue to see the game improve. And at the moment, I'd really like to see some more engaging content to help me kind of feel more invested in my character and make the time that I spend within the game feel meaningful. So what could some potential solutions be to some of the issues we're seeing now with our time being invested, but not much in return? Well, I think the simplest one would be to have seasonal rewards actually include some of the materials for mass working. Even a portion would be useful. That way, when future themes are implemented in the coming seasons, we'll actually also be getting master working materials, meaning we'll spend slightly less time in the pit. So it kind of help us accomplish multiple things at once. Now I know not everybody lives by this manner, but I think for most people, it's a little bit ingrained within them in human nature just to try to be more efficient whenever they do something. And having efficiency even within a hobby is also nice to see. And I don't think it's too much to ask for some of the similar principles to be applied to some of your hobbies as well. Some increased efficiency, at least in terms of time investment, would be a fantastic change for Diablo 4. I can't say it enough, I'm really enjoying this season of Diablo 4, and I really enjoy the new master working system as well. However, I think there's still a lot of room for improvement. Lastly, let's talk about maximizing your own efficiency. At the end of each run, you'll see how many fragments you pick up, and you can divide an hour by the average time it takes you to run them. Now this may vary based on the mob type or even the boss, so do several runs of each. In this case, we'll use 4 minute runs as an example, so we'll take 60 minutes and divide it by 4. That means without any breaks, we can do 15 runs per hour. Multiply that number by the fragments you receive at that tier. In this case, we have 29, so 15 times 29, or 435. Repeat this process for other tiers in the vicinity to find the ideal farming point. The most efficient tier will be the one with the highest final number. Be mindful, your fatigue can also play a factor as well especially if you're using a fragile, squishy, or glass cannon build. As you become mentally fatigued, you might want to scale down a couple of tiers. For higher survival builds, the fatigue can also alter your timing on cooldowns, which might help maximize your DPS. Use this footage as an example. I don't even care if the enemies are lined up, which is a huge boost to my damage output. I'm basically on autopilot at this point, and that's only going to make things take longer. Again, it's much appreciated if you leave any feedback or comments about the season, changes, or even this video. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.